guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG Games, and we're going to be continuing a tutorial series on how to make a 2D RPG in Unity 3D. So, in the previous tutorials, we've made a player that we can move around using the arrow keys or the WASD keys, and then when we run into this chest, it creates a random object that we created in the last video. But the problem is, we can't go over these items, and they're kind of just there. So, what we're going to do now is make the item mechanics. Now, the item mechanics is going to allow us to tell the system which object it is, and then what if what if the object is a certain type of object to give it a different result. For example, if we run over this, we might get five health. Also, you've noticed that I have deleted the health script. Now, the health script we are actually going to be rewriting inside of our player stats. That was just a temporary script, so now we're going to do it um, for real this time. So we're going to open up Text Wrangler. And now, underneath this, well, first, I'm going to add one thing called a header class. Now, what a header is, or a header attribute, my bad. The header attribute allows us to organize our stuff. And so, if I just go ahead and add a header, the syntax is header, space, parentheses, quotation marks, and I'm going to just call this movement. And then close that header. Now, if I save it and go into Unity, you'll notice that on our player stats script, we have a little tab called movement, and it actually separates them, so that's very useful. Okay, so now we are going to create our thing. So I'm gonna create a new header. Uh, if I can spell, I'm gonna call it health, because this is gonna manage all of our health stuff. So then, I'm gonna say public int health, semicolon. Then I'm gonna say public collider, um, health check, semicolon. Then I'm going to say public string tag name. Then I'm going to say public text health text. If you remember when we worked on the health script in one of the earlier videos, we added this line of code. So I've just gone ahead and added that line of code when I was working on um, the plans for this tutorial. And so it's just using UDEngine.ui. I don't know why it's not built in yet, but oh well. Okay, so now we are going to write our functions. So first, we need to create a new void called on trigger enter, the function we've probably used the most in this series. And then instead of putting the collider col like I usually do, I'm just going to leave it empty, like we did with our update and our move function. In here, I'm going to say if health check dot game object dot tag is equal to tag name so just like we did in the other one we're gonna say health minus minus now in the update function I'm going to say health text um, dot text whoops wrote that variable wrong because I don't like having two words that are the same next to each other I'm just gonna change it to health display dot text is equal to health colon space plus health dot to string. There we go. So now if I save this and come into Unity, you'll notice that we have this. Now we have to assign these variables. So I'm going to say oh, the 10. The health check is underneath our player, and I'm just going to drag the health check object onto there tag name is player and the health display is under our HUD canvas I renamed it HUD and then I'm gonna click on the player and drag the health onto there now I'm gonna actually make this a prefab so that we can use this in other um, scenes so now I'm going to duplicate this health because we need something for coins I'm gonna rename this coins then I'm gonna move this down from negative 20 to negative 60 and I'm gonna change just this to coins and like I did with the other one okay so now we save this we should be able to go in and there you have it we have this but now the items still sit there and they don't do anything so now we're gonna write the item script first of all I'm gonna click on the coin and the health by hitting command or control if you're on a Windows I'm gonna go to add component and I'm gonna type an item script in the search bar now it's a neat little trick that I've learned and what it does is it allows you to hit new script, create an ad, just right there. It's that simple. Now I'm going to open up this item script. And now that it's open, I'm going to scroll down my notes and we'll begin on the item script. 
So now we need to delete both of these functions. I'm going to move this down there. Now we need to say we need to create a few variables. First of all, we need to tell the system what kind of object it is. Rather than making two scripts and making another script for each object, which you could do, we're going to use one. Ob we're going to use one script to handle which object it is. We're going to set, make a public string item name. Now the reason I'm using a string is because some of the intermediate, some of the people who have coded before in the past will say, well, you could just use a Boolean. That is true. We could very well use a Boolean, but by using an item name, by using a string, we can give it more variation in one um, variable. So like if we set the text to coin, then it would know to, it was a coin. If we set the string to health, it would know it was health. Rather than using a bool and creating like a public bool is health and a public bool is coin, we can use two variables in one. So now we need to create another um, variable. It's going to be an integer. So we're going to say public int quantity semicolon. All right, so now we need to make some private variables that we don't want showing up in the editor. So I'm going to say private game object player semicolon. Then we say private player stats, player stats. That's right. You can actually refer, you can actually change variables from inside of another script. So that's a cool little feature. So now in, we need to initialize because these are private variables. We cannot assign them in the editor. So we need to assign what this object is. And then we're going to get the player stats script from this object. So I'm going to create a void start. That base, this script function just runs at the beginning of the game whenever it's started. We're going to say player, if I can spell player right, is equal to game object dot find with tag player. So basically all this does is find one object, the closest object it can, to player. All right. Then we need to set um, player stats is equal to um, player dot get component player stats. Now what this is doing is this this has to go in this order actually script execution order is very important because if we actually put this above this it will not know what to find this from and we'll get an error but if we because we because you can't like change something unless you found it right so if until so once this object has been set then this can be found from that object it's just that simple so now we're going to create our favorite function on trigger enter And then we're going to say collider col on this one. So now in this function, we're going to use our item names things. So we're going to say if col dot game object dot tag is equal to player. Now you can actually use cascading if statements. So that's a um, helpful thing. So now we're going to say if item name is equal to coin. Now basically it's just this function just checks to see if the item name text is equal to coin. So I'm going to go down, add the parentheses, then we're going to say, and we're going to leave that there for now, and then we're going to go down and we're going to add another if statement called an else if statement. Basically, if this isn't coin, then go to the next one. So we're going to say else if item name is equal to health and now we're going to go into this so we're going to say player stats dot coins plus equal quantity now you'll notice we haven't added a coins variable yet so I'm going to create a new header header coins and then we're just going to say in here public int coins. That's all I'm going to add. And I'm also going to add a public text coin display. 
Now I'm going to basically just copy this line of code right here, move down, paste it, but I'm going to say here, coin display is equal to coins, and then set this to coins. There. So now in our item script, we're going to say this. Now we also want the object to disappear so that you can't keep running into it. So then we're going to say destroy game object. Now basically all this does is delete the object from the scene. That's as simple as that. You can't see the object. Then we're just going to copy this line of code right here and paste it right here. And we're going to change this to health. Now if I save this and go into Unity, we shouldn't have any errors. Good, we don't. So now on the we're going to now you'll notice we still have the coin and the health selected. So I'm going to click on the coin just the coin, and I'm going to type in for the item name, coin. Quantity, 5. Now for the health, we're going to say health. And the way we've designed it, it is case sensitive. So now that we've got that, I'm going to apply this real quick. because I, And then I'm going to name this. This is our pause menu. I'm just going to name it pause menu. I'm going to create a prefab out of it just so we can use it later. All right, so now we have that, we're going to play it. And you should see that that happens. And that is because we have not assigned one crucial element. And that is this, the coins display. So I'm just going to drag in the coins thing to right there. Now if I play, it should say zero. And it does. But if I run over this, it still does nothing. And that is because the collider is not big enough. Now, if I drag this object into the scene, and I focus on it, you can see that the collider is very thin. That's not what we want. I'm going to delete it, and I'm going to focus on the map. Okay, but you'll notice like the player collider is very thin. So we are going to change. So it actually cannot detect it because it's so thin. So I'm going to go to coin, and I'm going to change this to 1.25. I'm actually going to select both of them, so I'm going to click on this. I'm going to say 1.25 by 1.25 by 2. Now if I play, you'll notice that we can go here, and now we have five coins. And so, that, so yeah, that is how you create, that, has, that is the item mechanics. Now in the next tutorial, we're going to be covering saving this data so that you can do like, you can leave and come back because if I leave and I come back, it goes right back to zero. And you can see that we, st we have to go and get it again. And that's not what we want. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for this video, for the next few videos, comment below and I will get back to your comments shortly. Um, don't, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Google+, and check out our website. I'll post links to those in the description below. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.